Hello and welcome to the very first episode of my chopper build. Uh, now I've already got it to the stage where it's rolling and at some point I'm going to want to test ride it but I definitely don't want to test ride it without a brake. So today I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to go about making the rear brake. So if you've seen the budget scrambler build you'll already have seen me make a brake pedal. For this bike I want to take it one step further, um, I want to incorporate some twists and I want to get some stainless steel involved. So much has changed with this frame um, and this bike that there would be no use in using the original brake system, it wouldn't work at all. So we're going to have to custom build one from scratch and I'm going to start that by making an anchoring point uh, for the brake drum. So what I mean by that is I need to find a way of bracing in between the brake drum and also the frame. Uh, that's going to stop the brake drum from spinning around and give us a functioning back brake. This here is the original brake plate and the original brace um, and as you can see it's in better days and it's also not very nice looking. Before I go cutting off any stainless steel um, I need to know how much I want to cut off. So the way I'm going to do that is by taking a little bit of welding wire and I'm going to bend it to the basic shape and length that I want. That way I'll be able to measure it up, transfer it to the stainless and cut it off. Now I've got my stainless measured and I'm ready to go ahead and cut it but before I do that I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about working with stainless steel and why it's so good. Now stainless steel is a little bit more expensive than mild steel um, but it's a lot less than chroming and that's really good because we can sand it down and polish it up to a mirror finish and it won't rust unlike chroming will. That being said, it will only not rust if you treat it in the right way. So when it comes to cutting stainless steel, I use an angle grinder, but I will always use an inox blade. And an inox blade basically has no iron content. If you contaminate stainless steel by using a blade that has been used on mild steel, um, it will lose some of the properties that keep it from rusting. So over the time, you will get little blemishes turn up and you might get a little bit of rust as well. The other thing is, you can weld it with uh, mild steel uh, welding rod, but I really, really wouldn't because again, you're gonna contaminate it and uh, you'll lose all of the properties that you're paying that extra money for. So as long as you take the time and work with it with the correct tools, um, it'll be a well worthwhile job. So my stainless steel is now cut but it's very raw, it's very dull looking. And before I go bending it and twisting it, it'll be much easier if I can polish it up like this. Now, there are loads and loads of ways that you can do polishing, but for stainless steel, it's a really tough material. And what I like to do is reach for my angle grinder. Now, I know what you're thinking, an angle grinder is a tool of destruction. Um, but I actually use it for polishing up. So what I've got here is a scotch bright pad, and I'm gonna use that to take down any high spots and any imperfections. After that, I've got my polishing wheel. I'll hit that up with a little bit of a buffing compound and it should be near on a mirror finish. Now this won't be the final finish. I will go across and polish it once I've completed it. Um, but when you're putting in twists, they can be quite a tricky shape to polish and get looking nice. So I've now polished up my stainless and it's looking much shinier, much nicer, which means it's time to do the twists. Now to do that, I'm basically gonna clamp it in the vise and I'm gonna use this to grip it and twist it round. Now you could do this uh, with a spanner, you could maybe do this with a pair of mold grips, but it's much, much easier to use one of these. Now I don't know what thread this is used for cutting, but it is a beast and it's gonna be good because it allows me to get a good bit of leverage on there. Now, you might be thinking that you have to heat that up to do that, but I won't for this diameter bar. If I was to go any larger, undoubtedly, I would need to apply some heat. But for this diameter bar, I'll be able to cold twist it and it should be a nice even finish.
update. That's the twist done. It's come out pretty beautiful. Um, I love doing stainless twists. They just look so good. Um, now the next thing I need to do is bend it so that it's going to fit both on the frame and also to the brake plate. So this is where that little bit of uh, welding wire that I used earlier comes in handy. I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to bend it to match the welding wire. Now the reason I'm going to heat this up is because I will be able to get a tighter bend. It's not necessary for twisting but it is necessary for getting a nice smooth tight bend. Okay, so that's looking good now. Um, I've just married it up against the uh, frame of the brake plate and it fits quite nicely. Now, I always measure things a little bit too long because it's much easier to take stuff off than it is to add it on. So I'm gonna take off uh, probably about five mil to a centimetre either end. And uh, then we can get round to making some little tabs and uh, welding those in. So now that's cut down to the right length, it's time to make our little tabs. And for that, I've got this four mil stainless sheet. Um, this is just an off cut from the scrap bin. Now I'm gonna use the original brake rod as a little template, and that way I can get a nice symmetrical rounded finish and the right size for the hole, nice and easy. So I'm gonna trace around that onto the stainless, and then I'm gonna drill out the hole in the middle. Um, now, one thing about working with stainless and drilling it is you don't want it to get too hot. Work it slow, use a lot of lubricant. If you work it too fast and it gets hot, it will harden and uh, you'll have a right job getting through there. You'll probably blunt and drill bit before you make a hole in it. two tabs done now um, they will be refined in a little bit but next up I want to start working out how to mount them and I think the best way to do that is to make a four mil slit in the metal slide them in and then weld them in from the top front and the sides and that should be a really nice strong bond so I'm gonna put my little four mil slit in there and uh, see if I can get these slid in there So I've made my little four mil slits and I've also started sculpting this as well. Um, and that's gonna help us when we get to the final bits of grinding and we wanna make it look a little bit neater. Something else I've done is I have changed the shape of these. Um, again, these should look a little bit nicer once we've welded them in and then we'll go across with the uh, flat disc one final time and just clean it up. As you can see, they slot in there quite nicely. Um, which means it's time for welding. So I'm not actually going to be using the MIG welder for this, I'm going to be using the TIG welder. Uh, TIG welder is really great because you can get a much neater finish and um, it saves you having to load a stainless roll onto the MIG welder. Uh, the catch is, I'm absolutely crap at TIG welding. Uh, so it's a good thing I'm good at grinding and uh, I guess we're just going to see how this goes. So as I well expected, I've made a little bit of a pig's ear of it. Um, the important thing is it's strong. Uh, most of those welds are pretty grim. There's a couple of nice ones, but uh, really on the whole, not a very good job. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to work with stainless throughout this is I really wanted to get better at TIG welding, but that doesn't seem to be happening yet. Um, so now I'm just gonna take my grinder and I'm gonna do a final little clean up job. And I'm also gonna hit up any bits that I haven't polished yet. Mm -hmm. 
So I think with the mighty power of the angle grinder, I have managed to pull it back. Um, that's looking quite neat now, so we're ready to fit it. Um, before I can fit it, I need to make up another tab. So I'm gonna do that the same way as how I made these tabs, but this time I'm gonna do it out of mild steel. So now I've made up my tab to mount it to the frame, it's time to go ahead and bolt it on. So at the rear, I've got the original bolt, um, and that's good to go. At the front, I've just cut down a bolt and drilled a hole for it, so I've got room for a split pin. So the plan of action here is to basically bolt it in at the back and then bolt in the tab at the front. From there, I'll be able to move it around to where I think it is best and go ahead and MIG it to the frame. So I've welded that on, but I've left the split pins out. And the reason for that is, obviously I'm gonna strip the bike down before I paint it. So I'll uh, put some new ones in there. I will also go ahead and weld that tab from the rear so it's really nice and strongly mounted to the frame. Um, but that concludes us for today's episode. This is great progress and I'm really pleased with what we've got because now I can start to build the braking system from that stable platform. So next week we're gonna be making the foot pedal and again we're gonna be working with stainless steel. Now, if you've watched the Budget Scrambler series, you will have seen that I get a lot of jobs done per episode. With this, I'm trying to focus more on telling you guys what I'm doing um, so that even if you're not into choppers, uh, it holds some value to you and hopefully you can learn something from it as well. So let me know in the comments below what you think of that. So a massive thank you for watching and I'll see you next time when we're gonna go ahead and make our brake pedal. Mm -hmm.